Welcome back to the Stephen Nice Show. Glad you're joining us tonight. One mind all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course our official website, the Stephen Nice Show.com. Rather watch is going on our YouTube channel and subscribe, comment, and like as you always do. Again, we're wrapping up Mental Health uh, Awareness Month, so make sure you're doing what you need to do for your mental health, not just this month, but every day, every day, because it's important. We're seeing a lot of people going through some stuff right now. All right, so how's the fam doing? Everybody doing good? Monday? Yes, sir. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, family. Yes. Happy Monday. All right, one question. I'm sorry, Chica. A chance to do it all again. Exactly, exactly. All right, so question of the day. Do you like PDA, Lania? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I even like to torture my loved ones with it, a.k.a. TK knows. <laughs> what about you, Chica? Me no fan. No. No. Nope. <laughs> no. Lania tell you, I, I react with violence. Violence? <laughs> he, says, he says I have priest hands. He doesn't like <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Naya? Um, personally for myself, uh, I think there was a time when I did, I didn't mind it so much these days. I probably a bit more reserved, but I don't mind it for others. You know, I, I think it's a good thing if people feel good about it. As long as they're not, uh, doing the most, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like what's, um, the one, Steven? What's, the one? And what's the one that just got married to Travis Barbie? Uh, they, one, one of them girls. Uh, even yeah. even her, I, I saw a clip from uh, the, the recent show on the Kardashians, and the, even the child said, "Please don't do that here." <laughs> They're sick of it. But I guess you know, you know teach his own. Uh, you know Twitter, let us know. It's do you like my me? that people have something to hide? I'm not hide something to prove when they do the all that. It's like, what is the love? <laughs> I mean, but they're but they're on the show on the new season, right? Yeah. So most likely that's for the show too. Yeah. Being that extra because I don't even though I don't watch them people, I don't remember her being like that with who was his name? Scott. Yeah. I mean, unless Travis is laying something else down that we don't know about, but you know. <laughs> something going on. Something going on. <laughs> All right, well, hot topic. So nearly one month ago, a Los Angeles man attacked Dave Chappelle during the stand-up show at the Hollywood Bowl. Since then, he pleaded not guilty to four misdemeanor charges and revealed his motive behind the attack. In an exclusive interview with New York's Post, uh, New York Post, excuse me, 23-year-old Isaiah Lee admitted that he was triggered by Chappelle's jokes about the LGBT community and homelessness during the show. But instead, he had no intentions of hurting the comedian when he ran up on stage. He said, I identify as bisexual, and I wanted him to know that he that what he said was triggering. I want him to know next time he should consider first running his uh, material by people it could affect. Lee uh, recalled struggling with homelessness at a point in his life. He stated that as the show went on, he grew increasingly frustrated with Chappelle's insensitive, insensitive, insensitivity excuse me, to the issue. Uh, Lee's breaking point, however, was a joke about pedophilia, uh, which he was triggered, uh, was triggered memories of him being molested as a teen. The rapper and father was uh, apprehended by security at the event and subsequently charged with four misdemeanor counts, including batter and possession of a deadly weapon uh, with the intent to assault. While Lee admits that he was carrying a replica gun, handgun with a retractable knife inside, he claimed he didn't pull out the weapon when he approached the stage. Lee said the security guard spat on him, twisted, twisted, I'm sorry, spat on him and then twisted him as if on purpose following the attack. Photos after the event show Lee with a broken arm and two black eyes. Um, now he does face additional criminal charges. Unfortunately, the viral incident had led to more criminal charges against him. So apparently a roommate of his that he stabbed uh, last year saw the footage and was able to identify him. And so where he was initially gonna do six months, probably six months in jail, with community service and living in a tr tr transitional home, he might be doing 15 or more in jail. He said, my son will be will be big by the time I get out. Uh, Chicken, what do you think about this? Him speaking out and um, do you think that he has a point with saying that, um, well, not even Dave Chappelle, people in general should run their jokes by people it could affect or do you think that it's comedy? 
You know, you come to Calvin Chain, you know what to expect. What are your thoughts? This is loaded. It's a lot. First of all, I, I don't think that those are his thoughts. I think that those are his thoughts after he talked with his lawyer. I think that um, if, if it is his thoughts at all, which someone put into frame to create a case for him, to try to keep him out of jail and possibly sue in the future. Um, I think that people are gonna feel how people are gonna feel. I want people to stop trying to mess with the art and just let it be. People are gonna hurt your feelings in your life. People are gonna say things. What do you, you, you can't go around attacking everybody. You can't do that. That's not how things are done. And the more that we suppress or stifle someone's creativity in that way, we're going to slowly but surely you lose our right for free speech if there's still such a thing. This is minuscule. It starts off like this, but eventually no one will be able to say anything. You won't be able to share your feelings or your emotions. I think that comedy is one of the last frontiers that we have of things that could possibly bind us and get us in a room together laughing on the same accord. Some things are offensive, but we can all agree that some things are hilarious to everyone, even if they can slightly be offensive. We've all experienced that because some of that is the truth. I think they need to let the art form stand. Now, yeah, what are your thoughts? Definitely hear what Chica is saying. Um, you know, I just, I guess I wish I, I, I could get inside that guy's head and, and kind of maybe see or understand more about where he came from, where he's coming from and, and make him feel that that was an appropriate course of action. Um, for me, it's not, I don't think, uh, I think for me, uh, I have to exercise more maturity, more tact, more class when it comes to, to violence. Um, I, I just, I, I think it's a last resort. And I, and I also agree with Chike strongly. I don't think it's, for me, I don't think it's the way to get your point across or your message across um, on both sides. One, that's a comedian. You know, everybody knows a comedian is going to say what they're going to say. They're going to feel what they, how they feel. They're going to speak how they're going to speak, whether it's political with the message or otherwise. Um, it's art. Um, so for you to really take offense to something that a comedian is sharing, uh, you know, it makes me kind of wonder more about, again, like I said, wh where you were coming from or what really, really made you lash out. Because um, it, de it definitely isn't Dave Chappelle. He don't know you, you know. And Dave Chappelle has even made commentary around the fact that he does know someone who is in that lifestyle or a few people and he's had conversations with them and he's not speaking about that person or about them in particular so I don't know not not the best course of action for me for him you know I guess it worked but he, he got the short end of the stick he got his arm all broken up and got you know charges pending so I mean what, what really what really you know benefited him or anyone in that case so yeah Alania what are your thoughts we are in a space where people are using certain words like they put on draws every day. And what I mean by that is, oh, they triggered me. Oh, this is my trauma. Words that you've never used before. And you're using those words in order to excuse whatever foolishness that follows behind whatever is going on. And it's, what's the word? It's trendy. It's the thing to say now. And it's, and it's a problem. People are wearing these words like badges of honor. People are on social media. Oh, oh, that triggered me. Oh, I was traumatized, dot, 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 dot. They're playing, they're playing. Like Chike said, comedians, they speak from life experiences, whether it's their personal lives or people that they know, you pull from those things to give us the comedy that brings us together to laugh. If you already knew that Dave Chappelle has said some things that you know a certain community does not agree with, right? Why would you go to his show? That's what, that was my thought. 
Why would you, matter of fact, why would you go to his show and why would you go to his show with a weapon? Yeah. What sense does that, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how, how did they calculate in your mind if, because he, somebody already said it, he don't know you from a hole in the wall. He ain't talking to nobody personally. He's sharing with you in hopes that you can connect with something that he's saying to make you laugh. Mm -hmm. This is not to upset anybody. This is not to hurt anybody's feelings. This is comedy. It brings people together. That's the one thing that brings people together is comedy. And people are trying to now turn comedy into something bad. And I just saw a resurface clip of George Carlin, who I love dearly. And I wish I can remember where I saw it because he talked about people being sensitive and it not making sense and it's stupid. But, you know, it, 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 okay, all right. Godspeed, sir. Um, I hope you, you know, enjoy your time. And I hope that, you know, you're able to explain this to your child you know, when you get out, when he's probably like in his teens. Yeah. I was wondering, like, like you said, <coughs> Dave Chappelle is coming under attack for the, some of these jokes. And so why would you go if, if that was going to offend you? And it makes you question it again, why would you have a weapon with you at this show for someone that is triggering to you? So, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I buy that one, but I hope he gets the help he needs. All right, well, a Birmingham, Michigan teacher faces disciplinary actions and is on administrative leave after assi assigning students at Roper School a worksheet titled Apes, Monkeys, and Lemars, an introduction to primates. As previously reported, the worksheet distributed last week uh, compared US, former US President Barack Obama to primates. The school uh, has released a statement to CNN condemning uh, the unnamed bio biology teacher's actions. The teacher's choice to use the curriculum with the disturbing racial, uh, racial offense is inconsistent with the school's mission and philosophy. We sincerely apologize for its use and harm in its cause. The statement continued. While the teacher has taken responsibility and admits the mistake of not properly vetting uh, the resource. We know that's not enough. She has been placed on administrative leave until further notice. And they also distributed a letter to um, to the parents uh, apologizing as well. Now, this is what bothers me about this story. They're doing so much to, you know, not talk about critical race theory, which they don't even teach that in school. They don't, they are trying to get out, you know, you can't say gay in school. You can't do all these different things in school. But over and over, you're seeing these teachers do these racial things that are kind of hidden, the hidden agenda and, and it's offending and students are recording this. So do you think that administrative uh, leave until further notice is, was harsh enough or she should be fired or what are your thoughts, uh, Naya? I think for protocol and for safekeeping of the institution, it probably is always the best route to go first. They, they may have the strongest intention and plan to release or fire, uh, but unless uh, someone, unless it's very, very easy to prove that there was something done wrong, you know, in the court system, because we, we already know public opinion, public idea, public, we know what's wrong, but the institution got to protect themselves. So I think yeah. it's, it's probably better for them that route. If I was a lawyer, I'd probably say that's probably the route to go, uh, human resources and so forth. But uh, they, they probably need to go and let that person go because it's no really correct in that type of uh, mindset, especially a teacher that old. It's not, it's not correct in that sort of a mindset. So they probably should let him go. I think it was probably the safest course of action for the school. When you? Do y'all remember when y'all was in school and there was something called critical thinking? Right. <laughs> I mean, I know that I, I know that I took that. I know they talked about it, you know, you know, being a critical thinker, you know, stopping, you know, what was it, thinking before you speak, you know, those types of things. Now, this situation, personally, it doesn't apply to me, but 
Let me go back to the word triggering. This can be triggering though. Yes. Nobody's yes. talking about that. Nobody's talking about how these teachers are interjecting their personal views on our children. Mm -hmm. They're interjecting their personal views on our children and you're supposed to be unbiased because our children are coming to learn from you. Right. There was right. something at a school that happened recently. Uh, a white student put up something. <laughs> Listen, teacher, a uh, white teacher cut a black student's hair in school. That's not oh, the yeah. first time I heard that. Yep. You yep. put your hands on my child with scissors. That's an assault. You have no regard for us and our children. Then when we act a fool, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out when critical thinking went out the door. Right. Because we have to be critical thinkers all the time. Because we got to watch what we say. Watch how we move. Watch when we get pulled over. Don't put your hands. Don't do that. We have to be critical thinkers from the moment we wake up to the moment that we're able to make it home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chica? <laughs> so I just want to paint this scenario. I want everybody to peek this situation. We have Sister Sewa. Sister Sewa is from Nigeria. She knows all about American history. She gets a job down at, uh, let's see, Cranberry Lane Elementary School, right? And she gives a homework assignment. The homework assignment is count the number of rows on the Captain John ship and how many slaves can fit on the ship. Connect the, sh connect the slaves to the ship and count and divide how many meals that the, the captain has to prepare for his slaves, right? If that left homework assignment was sent home by Sister Sewa, where would Sister Sewa be? Uh, so what makes this different from that situation? Except Sister Sewa's situation is true. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, these schools, I mean, just watching the people at the school board meetings and, uh, you know, it, I, and you know it's, it's um, voting season, so you see all these political ads and uh, just some of them just make it just disgusting, you know, just disgusting. And and but you know it's always been like this, but I, but Trump really gave these people a voice. He really did. To uh, and, and like people say, they're trying to out Trump each other. A lot of the people um, that are there. Common, there's a common theme that's going on. I talk about it with Lania all the time. And it's audaciousness. People have great amount of audacity and great capacity just to do whatever the hell it is that they want to do without yeah. consequence. Mm -hmm. Something's got to yeah. give. Yeah. Something's got to give. It's true. It's true. Huh. Well, uh, Wells Fargo is at the center of another highly controversial headline involving discrimination practices. And, and in this instance involves a fraudulent interview process enacted by the company. According to claims from a former executive with the bank, Wells Fargo allegedly held fake job interviews <laughs> for minority candidates. They had no intention of hiring because the jobs were already promised to others. New York Post reports that uh, Joe Bruno, a former Wells Fargo executive in wealth management is firing some explosive claims um, at the embattled uh, financial institution. As he alleges that Wells Fargo uh, purposely held fake job interviews with minority candidates for positions that were already secured by other job seekers. Bruno further states that when the uh, when he complained about the blatant uh, discrimination, excuse me, he was promptly fired in summer of 2021. He says that his termination came shortly after he told his supervisors that the fake interviews were inappropriate and morally wrong, ethically wrong, according to the exclusive interview he did uh, at the New York Times. However, Wells Fargo tells a different story of Joe Burton's termination, Bruno's termination, excuse me, as the company claimed that he was fired for retaliating against a coworker. 
that didn't exactly help Wells Fargo shoot down the allegations as seven additional former and current company employees claim that they were also told by supervisors to interview diverse candidates, uh, even though they had no realistic chance of ever getting the job. Wells Fargo instead alleged, alleged uh, allegedly held the interviews to make the appearance the company was actively at attempting to have diversity in the workplace. Lania. Wells Fargo is always in some sugar honey iced tea. Always. Always in something. It was something in regards to mortgages for black home, um, home buyers, this and some other stuff. Um, I am not a Wells Fargo customer. Um, but if y'all want to book me for a commercial and pay me, hey, I'll take it. But um, outside of that, I, I, I'm no longer surprised. It's just the fact that, you know, it's, it's just coming out more now. I'm no longer surprised. It, you become, and I think Chike said this at one point in time, we were talking about something else. You hear about so much stuff you go from exhausted and tired to just numb. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how else you want me to feel? What else am I supposed to do? And, and, I, and, and me personally, depending on where you are, and I'm gonna just say it, call a spade a spade. I'm the only black woman at my job. I'm the lowest paid person at my job. The lowest paid, I'm not even in the 10 percentile of what I'm supposed to be making right. doing what I do at my job, not even in it. You understand what I'm saying? Like they don't want to pay us. They don't want to compensate us. And you got to, you have to be able to speak up. And I don't know if these people, I hope that the people who were interviewed now that this is out, I hope they get together. I hope y'all yeah. come together and you are able to file some sort of class action lawsuit. Yep. Because you wasted my time knowing that you weren't, you were playing, knowing that you weren't going to hire me. And that's embarrassing. So you had me come, people saw me, and you weren't going to hire me. And most likely the people you did hire was, I'm going to say they probably were less experienced than the ones of color who came and you interviewed. Yeah. Chica, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I, this isn't new. Uh, even at my old employer, uh, there was a known thing that we have to go through interviews <laughs> for legal purposes, but the job is already promised to CEO's nephew or niece. Mm -hmm. Those are already allotted for, but they have to go through the motions for legal purposes. That, that honestly, that happens everywhere. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't know, like, so a company gets kickbacks when they hire people that are on welfare or they're on unemployment. They get some type of tax write-off when they can pull someone who's living off of the government in some type of way and pull them out of that situation to actually being employed. The government actually takes care of that company for doing that. So if it's you being the better qualified person, the company's always going to look at the company's end. They're, they're going to take care of them first, whether mm -hmm. it be hiring Joe's niece or Joe's nephew to come work in the position that they already allotted for that person, or hiring someone who's maybe down on their luck and making them a little bit better over you who's qualified because it takes care of the company. Mm -hmm. So that stuff's not new. They just had that situation in the NFL where that coach, um, was uh, interviewed for a coaching mm -hmm. position, a head coach position, and was never going to get it. And so nope. I think he's actually still in the league uh, for that. Well, he was. I think he – so somebody – so a team decided to really give him an offer. Okay. I'm not sure – or or they came to some sort of resolution. I'm not yeah. sure because I haven't heard anything else about that. Okay. But, yeah, no, that's, that's exactly what happened. And he's qualified. Yeah. We have – Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Naya, you watch football? Uh, not enough to probably answer this question. So, I, think, I know Mike Tomlinson. He's mm -hmm. um, how many other black coaches are there? Because I can only think of him in the NFL. Um, in the NFL, head coaches. 
head coaches? Uh, I, I would imagine it's Tony Dungy is gone. It's got to be in the NFL. It's got to be less than. I mean, it might be two. Yeah, I, I can't, can't even think of the other. Than that. I think it's two. It's three. And I'm talking about head coach, not offensive, yeah, head not coach. defensive. Yeah. I'm talking about Mike Tomlinson is the only one that I can think of. Yeah, for the Steelers, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not. That's not a. Yeah, we, we don't have the numbers in the in the coaching positions in the league or ownership. No. Nope. nope. You guys remember Mad TV? Yeah. Remember Mad TV? The character Stewart, the little yes. boy. Look what I can do. Right. That, exactly. That's what the companies are doing. Just to get through them. Look what I can do. Look what I can do. And then they get by. Like, we don't have to obey any laws. We did the part. Keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Just satisfying an eye. That's it. Yeah. Now, did you, did you uh, say what you had to say about this? I mean, well, Wells Fargo? Yeah. Just throw the whole bank away. You know, this is the, this this is this is the time to kind of they're tr- they're riddled with issues. So you know, this is the time to kind of plug those other black banks that we always are, are we're, we're hearing about these days on a rise. So I think Greenwood is one of them. There's a few of them across the country. Some of them are only online and digital. But this is why we need to to reconcentrate our energies as a as a as a family as well as you know with with uh, whatever allies we have and work on properly building and empowering the 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 minority owned black owned whatever other than those owned institutions we know wells fargo's story we know their story we know their very very riddled troubled discriminatory history i don't know why people still bank with them to be honest i don't i stopped years ago years ago you know so. okay fine we'll switch banks <laughs> I do yeah, bank you, with you them. Still, you still, you still bank with, uh, bank with forever, but 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 yeah. you know it's it is time for us to start putting our money where our mouths are. You know what I mean? And you know, now here um, when he joined with us, he he had me, um, <laughs> yeah, pick a, pick a uh, black owned bank for the Stephen Knight show. I was like, I don't know about that one. He said, <laughs> we got to. See, see that that's bad when you yeah. have reaction <laughs> like that. That's bad when we have reactions like that. Well, no. but it's it's all too common. It's all too common, you know. It's, it's all too common. They've been, They've been great. They've been but great. that's but that's the kind. But those are the things that they want us to say yeah. about yeah. about each other. Yeah. Like, you're gonna have to send me that information. For all it knows, okay. for all intents and purposes, shout our bank out on like shout them out. Citizens Trust Bank. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Thank you. They're, they're, they're really, thank you. Yeah. They're really good. Really yeah, we good. need we need to start plugging them. We just when we come to these situations where we run into those discriminatory uh, itch conversations, we just need to talk about that and then plug the the the, the alternative. And the, the my one problem with uh, some of our establishments sometimes we don't have good customer service. They actually have really good customer service. Really good customer. That's what I keep hearing yeah, about yeah. black owned banks. Yeah. I I keep hearing that the customer service is stellar. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I keep hearing that about these black owned things, but definitely send me their information because I need to I need to open up another business account. Yeah. And I, I don't mind, you know. Yeah. Do people do people talk to us in the comments? Let's tell them to mention some more, plug some more banks in the comments if they get yeah, Absolutely. Please do. Please do. Well, let's we'll take a quick break. When we come back, Bobby Brown, he has a new docuseries and a reality show coming out. And he's talking about Whitney Houston, find out what he has to say. And then people were talking about the monkey pox. More about that when we come back, right back after this. <laughs> 